G'day, welcome to the Tech Math Channel. What we're going to be having a look at in this video is how to measure angles. And not only that, we're going to have a look at a few other things actually. But we're going to look at first off just the ways that we measure angles. Then we're going to have a look at some different types of angles and their measurements. They have some common angles. We'll also then look at how to construct angles. Okay, so hope you enjoy this video. Hope it comes in handy for you. So the first off thing I'll do is I'm just going to have a quick recap on what an angle is. Uh, I've made a previous video on angles, so it might be worth watching. But if you can't be bothered and you just want to get straight into it, the first thing is... Where two lines meet, so say we have two lines meeting here, what we have is, first off, we have two arms meeting here. The spot where they meet is called the vertex. Some of you guys might be thinking, hey, in the previous video, this is called an intersection. Where lines cross is called an intersection. It was just a point like this, it's called a vertex. But this little gap that we have here, this little space between the two arms, this is called an angle. And we're going to look at how we go about measuring these, because it's fairly simple. So, first off, the way that we measure an angle, or any angle, is using one of these guys, which is a protractor. Now, a protractor, you might actually have a different version of one of these, where they're the full circle. They either come in half circles or uh, full circles. But for either one of them, they're divided up into these little parts here, you'll see, okay, uh, these little units here, 10, 20, 30, 40, but even these smaller units here. Okay, all up, there's divide up to 360 little parts, and each one of these little parts is called a degree. So 360 degrees. The symbol we use for these is degrees like this. So it's kind of like degrees that you might have heard of when you uh, think of temperature. Okay, so it uses a similar sort of word, and it uses a similar sort of symbol, but one's measuring temperature, and one is you know measuring the size of an angle. So. How do we use one of these protract uh, protractors? Well, what I'll do is, first off, I'll show you uh, just some common angles that you'll get with them. Okay, so, first off, imagine that we had two arms and they're meeting at the same point. Now, this is going to be the first angle we're looking at. So, one arm is pointing this way, and the other arm is also pointing in exactly the same direction. You might be, hey, if you measure this, you're getting zero degrees. And you'd be exactly right. This is just a, I guess it's no angle, it's zero degrees, but it's a great little base to start from. Okay, so we're going to start with this idea of zero degrees, and we're just going to make our angles progressively bigger. Okay, so, so say we had one of our arms going up to zero degrees here, and now we had, as you might remember from the previous video, going up through this particular part here. So we form what is known as a right angle. I'll write that up here as a right angle. Again, a previous video we looked at these, they are symbolised by this. You'll notice that these guys go up through the 90 degrees. This is a really, really important uh, angle to remember. This is The reason is because this is the angle which occurs on the corners of, say, squares and rectangles and things like this. So, an angle which goes up like this, which where the lines are coming one perpendicular from the other, is a right angle. Okay? So, I'll get rid of that, and I'll now talk about angles which occur between zero degrees and right angles. You might remember these were called acute angles. And these were any angle which occurred between 90 degrees and zero degrees. So, I'll give you an example of this. I'll get rid of, I'll just put this uh, up here on 90, so we can remember that's a right angle. But say we had an angle going up this way, okay, just selecting the right pen there, and say I had an angle which was going up here. And you might look at this and say, hey, this is going up about 61, 62 degrees. And this is an example of an acute angle. It's an angle which is between 0 and 90 degrees. Okay, so an acute angle, I'll just put that in there, it's between 0 and 90 degrees. Okay, so say we made our arms go further and further and further apart now, and eventually they went all the way around, so we followed this baseline right along on our protractor. And you're going to see that we go all the way around to this measurement here, which is 180 degrees. 180 degrees, by the way, this an angle like this you might remember from the early video I made, is called a straight angle. You probably get the idea of why that's called a straight angle, being that it forms a straight line. Okay, so a straight angle is 180 degrees, another really important one to remember. 
okay so so far we've got zero degrees a right angle is 90 degrees a straight angle is 180 degrees and any angles between zero and 90 which are called acute angles there's another group of angles which are any angles between our right angle and our straight angle between this 90 and 180 between 90 degrees and 180 degrees and you might remember these were called obtuse angles okay so obtuse angles are angles which occur between 90 and 180 degrees so we could keep going all the way around because we're not completely finished yet we can keep going around in this circle because our angle could extend even beyond this and so so as to get rid of this line I'll put this little uh, 180 here so we remember that's there but I can keep going here and I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit so we can see this so say I keep going and I start to measure say an angle which occurs this big okay so what I'm talking about here is an angle say this big if this is the case we're going beyond just our any of these angles and we hit this zone in here which anywhere within this zone anywhere right around all the way back to 360 degrees which is called a reflex so any angle which is 180 degrees to 360 degrees is called a reflex angle okay now just one little thing with this you might also realize that you could come down at 270 degrees another important one to remember and although the angle we're talking about is going around here we do form a little 90 degree on the uh, outer part of our angle there so it's another good one to remember there so say you might actually consider say why do we bother have 360 degrees when we go all the way around and the zero degrees the same as 360 degrees the answer to that is no okay um, zero degrees is where we have no angle 360 degrees is where what we do is our angle our two arms meet but we're actually talking about okay so our two arms are going this way but our angle we're talking about is this part here the complete rotation okay rather than this nothing space in between okay so there are different types of angles on a circle okay uh, really really important to remember especially the right angle here and the straight angle here I think and that knowing there's 360 degrees in a circle I think they're probably the most important things so how do we go about measuring the angles in a circle okay that's now the next part of what we'll look at you've probably got this idea already we're gonna well what you do is uh, you get your angle and I'm actually just going to superimpose an angle on top of I'll zoom back in now and I'm going to superimpose an angle on top of what we're doing because uh, look the programming I have doesn't actually work very well to actually move my protractor around so say here I'm going to draw this angle a little bit I'm going to draw an easy one to start off with and get you to try and name what it is so say this was my angle here you're going to notice first off what you do is you put the vertex of your angle on this center point here and you have the horizontal coming off on a zero so one of the baselines of your angle coming off on a zero let's say I have an angle here which is just there what is it so you might go around and go okay it's 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 degrees and you might be able to even go that next step and say oh that's an acute angle and you'd be right it is a fairly cute little angle okay um oh no, terrible math joke okay um, and you'll be right but just when you're doing these you have to make sure that you're lining up your vert vertex with your center point here of your protractor and also the baseline here lines up now I just want to show you one other little pitfall that you can get in when you're measuring angles which is this one say I'm measuring this particular angle here okay uh, I've got my vert vertex here everything's good in the world I've measured it up I've kept it on zero because there's a little zero down there and I'm going to measure this angle then you might say okay what angle are we talking about here so you might look at this automatically and say hey that's 130 degrees and I hate to break it to you you're not correct because um, what we have here is we're only talking about this particular little angle here so you're gonna look at this and say hey wait a second 
this angle is less than 90 degrees, it's an acute angle. So it's a really, really important thing before you measure any angle, I think, is to actually try to make a bit of a guess about how big it is. Okay, and if you're having a look at this, you might actually notice that this we're going up 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 degrees. Okay, so start from the zero, which is here, you can't see it, I've crossed it out, being the mean-spirited person that I am, but this is only a 50 degree angle. Make sure you're reading the right one. Okay, we're not reading this part out here, we're reading this particular section here. Okay. Alright, uh, just last thing, you probably now get the idea of how to construct an angle. So say we wanted to construct an angle that was, um, what about we want to construct an angle that is 130 degrees big. So usually what I do with this is you're not going to be able to necessarily draw on a protractor like I can, but what I do is I would so start with my vertices and I would draw the baseline, okay? Just one baseline going that way. But I'd probably do a better job of it than my messy thing there. And now what you can do is you can move this protractor. So what we do is we're going to move this protractor, if this protractor wants to move. I'm going to have this real problem where the protractor won't want to move. So we actually, oh look, it's, it's definitely not going to move there. You knew that was going to happen, didn't you? Uh, pretend we can move it. So what we're going to eventually do, we're going to move it. So, <laughs> bit of cheating here, isn't there? So we'd move it, so these guys line up, okay, on the zero. And say what we're trying to draw, 130 degrees, I'd now mark this area in. I'd get rid of my protractor, so pretend we got rid of that protractor altogether, and now I would draw this line here. The next thing I'd do is I'd make sure I labelled my angle, okay? Even if I mark it like this, I might even go that next step of writing 130 degrees. Okay, so anyway, I hope you found that video informative. Um, we are going to do some more video angles uh, videos, so hopefully you have a look at those. This is just a nice basic thing to start off with. Practice drawing angles, they're really, really handy little things. Anyway, see you next time. Bye.